I'm glad to be back this week, and we've been going through this series on gifts, and not just any kind of gift, spiritual gifts, the gifts that God says that he gives to every believer to help them to do the work that he is calling them to do. And I don't know about you, but as we've gone through this series, gifts just kind of makes me think of Christmas. Anybody else? And I think we'd all wish it was like 30 degrees and snowing right now, right? We wish that it... No? Okay. Well, it's just me and Cam then, I guess. Yeah. No, but it makes me think of Christmas. And you know, at Christmas time, there are three kinds of gifts that you can receive. And we're not going to talk about the third kind. The third kind is gifts you don't want, but that doesn't apply to today because we should all want the spiritual gifts God has for us. But there's two kinds of gifts that you might get at Christmas time. You might get a gift that you didn't even know you needed. This is a creative, elaborate, maybe it was a homemade gift, and you opened it, and you had no idea what it was going to be, and it was so awesome. You know, I think of uh, my best friend, Jenna, and Jenna is, like, so creative, so detail-oriented, and she will, like, make you presents. And not only will she make you an incredible present, but she, like, wraps it so nice. Like, I kind of am, a, you know, in a bag or some, like, cheap, you know, wrapping paper around it. You might get a sticky bow on the top. But she will buy, like, this nice wrapping paper, and she puts ribbon all the way around it, not just a little sticky bow on the top. And she'll, you know, everyone will have this personalized little card on the top of it. And it's always so exciting to open her gifts because I never know what it's going to be but I always know it's going to be something I didn't know I needed. And then there's the kind of gifts that I also like, but these gifts are the gifts you kind of see coming. They're the gifts you kind of see coming. So if you're in my family, you know that most years I ask for kind of the same things. I ask for some kind of book, maybe a new video game, and then the last like three years I've asked my sister for a new journal, and this is the really exciting thing. Pens. I love pens, and not just any kind of pen. These are G2 pens. If you have not written with these, they will change your life. They're the best pens in the world. I like the 0. 0.5. 0. 0.5 is good. 0. 0.7 sometimes smudges too much. But I've used these pens since high school. If you uh, did debate like Evan did, these are like the pens debaters use. I don't know why. It's just the like set pens and I've never gone back. I always use these pens. But those gifts are gifts that I know are coming. They're practical. They're practical good gifts and I'm going to get a lot of use out of them. And it might not be as exciting to open as something that I don't know what it is, but it's still a gift that makes me feel really loved and valued. And with both of these types of gifts, you know, the goal from the gift giver is the same. It's to show their love for you, to show, you know, hopefully you're not just giving people gifts because you hate them. Um, Good for you, I guess, if you can do that. But, you know, we give people gifts because we love them. We love them, and we want to get them something that we think is going to be awesome for them. I don't think any of us would ever purchase someone a gift and be like, you'll probably never use this but you know, here you go. We would, unless you want to keep it for yourself. A lot of people just looked at their spouses, so maybe you, you do that, I don't know. But most of the time, we want to give someone a gift because we know they're going to use it. We know they're going to love it. You know, some of the most precious gifts that I've ever received are like the most random, ordinary things. One year, my goddaughter, who is Jenna's daughter, so she takes after her mom, she Went to the store for my birthday, and Jenna let her pick out something for me. And I opened it, and I was so excited. And it was a 10-pack of Batman masks. <laughs> a 10-pack of Batman masks. And, and I said, Erica, why did you get this for me? And she said, because I just love you. And it was just, I don't know, I guess I made her think of Batman, or maybe I needed to be able to hide my face more, I don't know. But she got me those masks, and they were so special to me, and I still have them all these years later because it was the person who gave it to me that gave it such meaning. Sometimes when we talk about spiritual gifts, I think we forget, maybe, that God is giving us these gifts specifically for us. And not just so we can have something and he can go, I gave you something and checked it off a list. He gives us these gifts because he loves us because he has a purpose that he wants us to accomplish in the world. 
And these gifts are going to be the way that we get to do that in our own unique way. And our gifts might not always make sense to us. Maybe sometimes we're like, God, why did you give me this? What am I supposed to do with this? Sometimes it can be scary to step out and use our gifts. But every gift, because it comes from God, is good. In James 1.17, it tells us, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. God is the perfect gift giver. Romans 12, 6 tells us that he gives us each different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. Each of us have different purposes, I think, and I think we know that, right? We have different personalities, different things about us. But if we can be honest, I think sometimes when we talk about spiritual gifts, you know, even Josh and I, when we were walking through the planning of this series, uh, this week was jokingly called the Boring Gifts Week. Because sometimes when we look at spiritual gifts, there's gifts that appear to be more spiritual than others. Hear me out. What to you sounds more spiritual? Prophecy or administration? Preaching or mercy? Like, sometimes we look at these and we feel like there are gifts that are like super spiritual. And there's gifts that are like helpful, they're practical. But every gift is spiritual because it was given from God. There are no better gifts and lesser gifts. Paul is really clear on that throughout the New Testament. Every gift is important. And just because you may never be someone who is on a platform doesn't mean that your gift is not significant. It might actually mean your gift is more significant. There are no boring gifts in the kingdom of God. And this is our first key point this morning. If you're taking notes in the app, we did, we did uh, put something in the app this morning. We've been not as good this summer at remembering to do that, but it's there today. The first key point is this. Every gift is from God, which gives it significant value. Every gift is from God, whether your gift is administration or whether it is prophecy, whether it's mercy or whether it's preaching. And really, it's not about the gift. It's about the giver. It's about the giver. It's about that we have a good God who created each of us and created all of these gifts for us to be able to own and use so that we can walk out our purpose. There are not spiritual gifts and boring gifts. There are just gifts and a good God who entrusted them to us. That's why this series is just called Gifts, because there are just gifts and a good God who has entrusted them to each of us. And as God gives us these gifts, He's showing us his love. He's not giving you these gifts to make your life harder. He's giving you these gifts because he loves you. And then our job in turn is to take our gifts, to figure out what they are, and to use them well to show his love to other people. And it's this cool cycle, this relationship we get to exist in with God where he gives to us and we get to give out in return. This is the second key point this morning. Your gifts are not about you. Your gifts are not about you. They are all about God. Just as we were singing about, God, show me your glory. Our purpose in life is to really understand and see the glory of God and then to be able to show, help show his glory to other people, to be that reflection of who he is in the world as we use the things in life that he's given us. And there's this balance here. We have to understand that God gave you an important gift, but know that he gave them to you not so that you can brag about them or look good or anything like that, but so that you can show his love to others and build them up. And when we get in this habit of being able to brag about who God is, it's really just another way that we're witnessing to the people around us. You know, people might come to you and say, how are you so patient as you are working with 40 students every day? God, how are you so loving even when people are, are annoying? They are causing problems in your workplace. Your kids are driving you nuts. It's God. It's God. And when we can point to him in all these moments where we're using our gifts, it becomes just another way that we get to share with the world around us the God who we serve. It is all about him. God is not a bad gift giver. Sometimes I think we are just like ungrateful. We are bad gift receivers, if that is a term. We don't acknowledge the gifts he's given us. Maybe we complain about the gifts he's given us. And God, he wants us just to use them 
and to allow him to work through us. I think any time that we're trying to like make it work on our own, it never works out. But when we come to God and we say, God, help me to use the gifts you've given me, it changes everything. It changes everything. So what are some of these other gifts? There's different lists kind of throughout the Bible of the different spiritual gifts that God gives. There's a list in Romans 12. There's a list in 1 Corinthians 12. And then there's a lot of these gifts are mentioned just in individual moments throughout the New Testament in a lot of Paul's writings. But then we see people really throughout the entire Bible from the Old Testament through the New Testament displaying these different gifts. So here's, here's kind of a few of them. I'm going to put them on the screen. And the, the ones that are in bold are not more important. I just did that because it was more aesthetically pleasing to me to be able to kind of differentiate between them. But these are some of the other gifts. Administration, encouragement, generosity, hospitality, mercy, and service. So let's take a minute with me. We're going to just look at a little overview of each of these gifts, and then we're going to talk about maybe how you can discover if this is something that you might be gifted in. So with administration, administration means this. Uh, it's, it's not admin work necessarily, but administration means to steer toward the accomplishment of God-given goals and directives by planning, organizing, and supervising others. It's kind, of, it's kind of like a manager. It's somebody who you have the ability to just see what needs to be done and you can get the right people motivated. You can make the, the list of all the things and that just like brings you joy. This is one of mine and I love it. I love administration. I love being able to look at something big that we need to figure out how it needs to work out and how we can break it down to organize it and be able to steer in the right direction. Then we've got encouragement. How many of you, you love somebody who they are good at encouraging? Man, don't we all? Encouragement means to come alongside someone with words of encouragement, comfort, consolation, and this is the part that I love, and to help them be all God wants them to be. Encouragement is more than just being like, hey, you're awesome. It is specific. It is, this is something I feel like my dad is so good at. He will just come up to you, and he will notice something that you did two weeks ago in the way that you were using your gifts and are able to just call something out within you to help you realize that you are doing the things that God wants you to do. That's what encouragement is. Encouragement is spotting those things. Hey, I saw you interacting with that new person last week and you went up to them and you made them feel so welcome. Thank you for using your gift of hospitality to be able to minister to people. It's the specific encouragement that helps us to be who God wants us to be. Then there's generosity. Generosity, we know that God calls us all to be generous and all of these things, like God hopefully asks us all to be encouraging and merciful and, and but there's some people who God has given you this special ability to do it on like a higher level. And so with generosity, it means to share the material resources you have in a liberal and cheerful manner without thought of return. Maybe for you, any time that we do something for missions, you are like pumped about it and you are just so ready to be able to give a special offering to that. Maybe you have people in your life who, when they're in need in different moments, you are so quick to go to them and to offer to help maybe pay some bills or maybe you've paid someone's way through school. And you just, you have this gift of generosity, this ability to be able to use the things that God has entrusted to you to really help and bless somebody else. Then there's hospitality. And hospitality means to warmly welcome people, even and especially strangers, into your home or church as a means of serving their needs. And I think this is another one we all love. Who doesn't love someone inviting you to their home and cooking a meal for you? If you cook a meal for me, honestly, you could bring me something from fast food or from coffee. Um, Angelica brought me a coffee this morning. And it just, it like, just makes me feel so loved. It's so wonderful. But we love those kinds of people who they invite you into their home. They invite you into their life. Maybe you've moved to a new city or a new place. And how much do we in those moments, we long for someone to notice us and to make us feel like we can make a home here. Hospitality is this just special gift. To me, I have a lot of anxiety about inviting someone I don't know into my house. I, it gives me a lot of anxiety. I'll do it. But there are some of you who that is just your gift. You love it. It fills you with such joy to be able to meet those needs. Then we have mercy. 
And mercy is to be sensitive toward those who are suffering, whether that's physically, mentally, emotionally, so as to feel genuine sympathy for them. But it's more than just feeling sympathy for them. I think a lot of us, we can feel sympathy or empathy for people. But it takes you to a new level as you speak words of compassion and care for them with deeds of love to help alleviate their distress. Mercy really is compassion in word and deed. It's compassion in action. It's coming alongside someone. Maybe they, they've had a death in the family, and you come and you meet some practical needs for them. Maybe there's someone in your life who they're just really overwhelmed, and you come help them clean their home. You come alongside with words of encouragement. That's the gift of mercy. It's the gift of mercy. And then finally, there's the gift of serving. And serving is to identify undone tasks in God's work, however small, and to use available resources to get the job done. And when we talk about serving, you know, serving is a lot of different things, you know. We have people who you serve the church in so many ways, and I think it often requires us to do tasks that people may never see. Most of you, you probably never see who mows the grass out here. You might never see who cleans or who paints or who helps us fix different things around the building. But you feel the impact of those tasks being done. You feel the impact. You see the impact as you step onto the property. Serving really is so important. And a lot of times, though, we, we go about our daily lives and we're doing these things, and we don't recognize how significant they really are. You say, oh, I'm just, I'm just serving. I'm, I'm just being gracious to someone. I'm just being kind. But you are using the spiritual gifts that God has given to you and how many of us have been blessed by someone who served us, by someone who showed us hospitality, by someone who came and offered an encouraging word or mercy in a moment where we just really needed some grace? Just like Erica's gift of Batman masks, often the most simple things are the most significant. The, most, the things you feel like are just normal to you, to invite somebody over or to, to try to you know, encourage them. These are the most significant things. Because the truth is, is we live in a world where people don't do these things. People are not merciful in a moment where you need it. They'd rather kick you when you're down than to show you mercy. People don't invite you into their homes. We all just stay kind of in our, our little worlds. We, we don't go outside of them. People are not encouraging. People are not generous. People are not. We live in a world that needs people with vision who can operate in the gifts of administration. You know, when we talk about administration, I think of Nehemiah. We're going to talk a little bit more about the story of Nehemiah next week as well, but I think of Nehemiah. And your homework for this week, if you'd like it, is to go read the book of Nehemiah. It's an incredible story. And Nehemiah, you know, he had this burden from the Lord, this vision from the Lord, to go back to Jerusalem and to rebuild the walls. The walls of the city were torn down. Everything was in ruins. It was this really terrible thing. And God anointed and appointed him for this task. And maybe rebuilding walls doesn't feel very spiritual. If you helped us rebuild our retaining wall, it sure didn't feel very spiritual, but we're glad we got it done. It might not have felt like the most spiritual task in the world to rebuild the walls around the city, but it was important. They needed it for protection. They needed it for a lot of different things. And the walls being in ruins was really significant because it symbolized the state of where Israel was at that time. Everything was broken down. And so Nehemiah, he had this God-given task. And I love as you read through Nehemiah chapters 1 through 3, you can see clearly he has the gift of administration. He has the gift of administration. He does several things that I think are really important. He, he has this burden from the Lord. And then he prays constantly asking God what he should do. He doesn't just set out to try to make his own plans. And I'm sure he could have made good plans on his own. But he begins to ask the Lord, you know, God, who do I need to talk to? What are the steps? What do I need to do? And God shows him, and he goes to the different, the king, he goes to the other rulers, all these people he had to get permission from. It was this whole process, kind of like if you're, you know, doing anything with a building, you've got to get the permits, you've got to go through all of that. And then he goes to the city and doesn't tell anybody what he's doing. He goes and he just walks around and, and he inspects the state of the walls just by himself. And I have to believe that as, as he's doing that, he is continuing to pray and to ask the Lord what to do. And then finally, he makes his plan and he rallies the people to come alongside him and to start to build. And this was a huge project. It was going to be a huge project. 
But in chapter 2, verse 18, I love how it's phrased. It says, so they began a good work. So they began a good work. And I've quoted Ephesians 2.10, I think, in seven sermons so far this year, but it's because I think it's one of the most incredible verses in the Bible, and it's this. We are God's masterpiece, prepared in Christ Jesus to do good works that he prepared long ago. God has a good work for you to do, and it may feel like you are just doing something that is really normal and ordinary, but if it's what God meant for you to do, then it is so significant. It has significant value and importance. And next week, we're going to talk about how God used all these different kinds of people to come and to rebuild the walls. We're going to talk about how we as the body can really use our gifts together for God's glory. But when we look throughout the Bible, we can see how God used specific people to do the specific work that he wanted them to do. These people, they knew that God loved them, that he had called them, that they had a purpose. And I don't think anybody would look at Nehemiah and think his gift of administration wasn't important. No one would say that Paul's ability to encourage was any less than his ability to preach the word. No one would say that the generosity of the early church was not one of the most attractive things to the communities around them. Jesus specifically, he spends a lot of time talking about hospitality, welcoming in strangers, visiting people in prison, helping people out who who need a home, who need a place to go. He tells us the story of the Good Samaritan to help us understand that mercy really is a gift. Mercy is a gift, the ability to see someone in need and to help them, whatever the cost. He reminds us over and over again that our job in life is to make ourselves last and to make him first and to spend our lives pouring into the people around us. And I think if you're wondering what your gifts are, there's like quizzes online you can take and things like that, but here's two ways that I think you can really find out. Number one, ask somebody around you. Ask someone around you. And if you feel like you don't have anyone around you, you could ask. I want to encourage you to start coming to a life group. Start coming to one of the life groups so that you can build community with people where you can really have other people who go, man, I saw you do this last week. That was so awesome. You were operating in your gifts. Ask the people around you. Ask your family. Ask them, what do you see me doing that maybe I don't notice that I'm doing? And then I think the other way that we realize what our gifts are is, you know, we we become aware of what the different types are as we read the word, we study the word, but then you kind of just start trying stuff out, right? I don't think there's anything wrong with being like, do I have the gift of administration? Let's see. And I think you know that you do because you will feel such joy when you do it. You will feel such joy. You know, I felt like at a young age I had the gift of teaching, and so I kind of tried it out in kids' ministry, That was not the right venue for me, and I got to youth ministry, and that was like it. That was better. Youth and adults was better. But I, for a time, I served in a way where I was using my gift, maybe not in a way that brought me as much joy as other things, but I think you really realize what brings you joy, and you do it. If you just love having people to your home, your gift is probably hospitality, if you love coming alongside people in really hard moments, or you find that you're always the person people keep coming to with their problems, they are calling you, they're asking to come over, they're sitting and talking with you, your gift is probably mercy. Your gift is mercy, and they find that safe place with you because they know you're not going to judge them. You're going to help them to be able to walk through it. Are you someone who you just see what needs to be done? You just see it and you make a plan and you get it done, your gift might be serving. It might be serving. And I challenge you today to take some time as we close to not only recognize that every gift is so important, but to look at your life and to go, okay, God, what might be the gifts you've given me? What might be some of the ways that I am already doing this, and if I could just become more aware of it, and invite you into what I'm already doing, it could really take off and explode in a new way because I would be operating not just in a gift, but in a gift of the Spirit. Ask the Lord to show you how he's gifted you and then walk courageously in it. 
You know, Nehemiah, he faced a lot of opposition. There were a lot of people who, they didn't like that the walls were being rebuilt. They didn't like Nehemiah. They probably didn't like how he was doing it, right? Like common leadership problems. People, someone doesn't like it. And they would come to him and, and you know, they would, you know, want to talk to him about it. And, and I love his response to them. This is what he says in Nehemiah 6.3. He says, I'm going to say this kind of sarcastically because this is how I picture him saying it. I am engaged in a great work. So I can't come. Why should I stop working to come and meet with you? Sorry, you can't come. Can't come. I am engaged in a great work. Because remember, God has given each of us a great work. What would our lives look like if that was just our response? And you could say it kindly to people, but like, sorry, I'm using my gifts today. I don't have time to listen to this. Sorry, I'm not going to be discouraged because you don't like how I'm operating in my gifts. I'm going to keep going. And this is our third point this morning. Don't let anything distract you from the great work God has for you. There are always going to be people who think you should be doing it this way or think you should be doing something different. There are going to be people who just straight up don't like you. Maybe in your workplace, people don't like you because you're a Christian. People don't like that you're kind. Keep doing it anyway. Keep doing it anyway. Keep doing the great work that God has called you to. Do not let doubt, disappointment, Insecurity, fear, or the opinions of others keep you from doing the work that God has asked you to do. Work diligently with all your heart, and God will establish your plans. Do everything for his glory and recognize that everything you're doing has such value. Whether you are spending your time in a boardroom or you're spending a lot of time in your kid's bedroom, whether your job is in a hospital or it's in the halls of a school, whether you sit behind a computer or you're leading a congregation, we all have gifts that God wants us to use. And one day at a time, one person at a time, one act of obedience at a time, this is how the world changes. It's how the world changes when all of God's people say, we are going to be who God wants us to be. We have a great work to do. Most likely, the majority of us in the room are here because somebody else used their gifts to show us who Jesus was. Somebody invited us to church. Somebody invited us into their home. Someone was encouraging and thoughtful and merciful. Somebody just served us. They served us. They did something practical for us, and it left such an impact. This is the work that we get to do, and it's exciting. It's exciting. And so as the band comes this morning, I want to ask you to spend just a little bit of time just reflecting. There's a spot on the app if you'd, if you'd like to jot down some notes or maybe, you know, what would be, out of all of the gifts we've talked through today, what's one you feel like, that might be it for me? That could be it. And how can you then pray and ask the Lord to help you grow in it? How can you come alongside other believers and learn how to walk deeper in it as you are encouraged by them? How can you, as you read the word every day, you just develop this hunger to really be who God is wanting you to be? And then I want to ask you, as we're singing, that you would just pray and you would say, God, okay, if this is my gift, help me to use it well. Help me to use it well, no matter the cost. Help me to be like Nehemiah, that I would be constantly praying and searching and looking for ways that I could be who you're wanting me to be. I think a lot of times we accidentally will stumble into doing good things. We just do. But how much better is it when we purposefully are asking the Lord for wisdom and insight and he gives us these things that we never would have thought of on our own and then he enables us to really be able to do it. It's life-changing when you live your life that way, when you recognize that you have such an important gift. You are important. Your work is important. No matter what stage of life you're in right now, no matter how young or how old you are, no matter how long you've been following Jesus, you have a significant calling on your life. And God is ready to use you in a new way. He's ready to give you energy and strength and new vision and insight. He's ready. And all we have to do is just be willing to say, okay, God, 
I might not know how this is going to work out. I might not know what to say or what to do. But God, I know that you're going to help me to do it. So will you stand with us this morning and join me just in a prayer of, of just seeking the Lord, but also in asking him to fill you up to be able to use your gifts for his glory. God, you have gifted each person in this room. There is no person in this room who is lacking a gift. We might not always be able to see what our gifts are. We might not always feel like they are important, but every person in this room has a gift from you. If we don't know what our gifts are, God, would you reveal to us this morning the specific and unique ways that you have gifted us to make a difference for your kingdom? Would you help us to recognize that it's not about us, but God, you want to use us. You need us to be a part of what you're doing in the world. You need believers who are excited to wake up every day and to serve you. God, we do not want to go through the motions of life. We want to wake up each day looking for you and looking for ways that we can serve the people around us. God, for those who feel weary, for those who feel tired, for those who feel like they don't know if this is their gift anymore. God, would you encourage them this morning? Would you speak so clearly beyond a shadow of a doubt that they would know that they are called by you, that they would know that they are chosen by you for a great purpose. And it doesn't matter what anybody else says or thinks. When we know what our mission is, we will not come down. We have a great work to do. God, we know that the only way we can use our gifts well is by being just so full of the Spirit that it pours out of our lives. We can't help but to use our gifts because we are just overflowing with the love that you have for us. As we worship this morning, as we surrender to you, as we seek you, would you fill the tanks that feel dry? God, for those who feel like their tank is full, would you top it off that it would be overflowing? That there would just be this overflowing blessing on their life as they operate in their gifts. Thank you for this calling that you have on our lives. This is not just for pastors. It is for every person, God, because you create every person with significant value to accomplish a significant purpose. God, we thank you for that. It can feel a little scary at times to think that the God of the universe has a significant purpose for us, but God, I pray there would be no fear in this room today, only joy, only excitement, only strength, only perseverance as we keep pressing on to be the people who you want us to be. God, we love you. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you that you loved us enough to give us gifts that we might use to show others your glory. Speak to us this morning. Holy Spirit, fill us up. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We want to just invite you to sing. If you'd like prayer, Ed and Sherry would love to pray for you. Pray where you are in your seat, but spend these last few moments seeking what God has for you, whatever that looks like, that we would be the people who he wants us to be.